Hello everyone, welcome to this new tutorial. Today we are going to cover how to create in three very easy steps the animation we have just seen. A mounted reality application to show off to your friends, to your colleagues, or even to put it in your CV. So for that we are going to follow these steps in the screen. It's very easy and I'm going to guide you through each one of them, so don't worry, it's very easy. And in less than 10 minutes you will have the application running in your private server. So first of all, we need to get and adapt the augmented reality files. So I will give you the links, so you have to click for instance in 3.min.ts, which is the one we are going to use, and then once you are inside, you will see a bunch of code, but you can't copy from here, because if you copy, you will get also these numbers. So for that, we are going to go to row, to row, and then now we can even save the file, and that's it. So that's one of the points. Then you are going to also download the ZLPF exporter for Blender if you want to modify my, my model. If you don't want to modify it, you don't need to do, to do this step. It's very easy, don't worry, don't get scared. Then we are going to download some other files, but I will put them in the description. And finally, in case you would like to, uh, you, you can find the files here and you want to steal them from me, you can also come to my link and come here, enter, and and it will trigger an error because the camera is already on in my case, but it's fine for you you would come here and in source files you can download each one of my files so you would come here and car jump save as and same with javascript for the data you would need probably other ways to get it but that's enough for now so this is the way to get all the files and here is a 3D model I'm going to share with you in the blend file and also in the in a format that is already working to upload in the website, TLB. Then this is how it looks. Uh, don't worry for the white plane in the in the background. In the web um, in the web application, it will look properly like you've seen in the video. So that you would come here, export, and you would export as DLB or DLDF. But in my case, I will provide already these files, so you don't have to worry. What you would do now is to come here to the file, the one, the one, the main file, the HTML that people will be opening in your website. I would call it index.html, but in, in this case it's for me to differentiate the files. So I'm going to go through this file uh, quickly and explain each one of the paragraph and also some points where you can adapt your, your configuration to your own uh, taste or desire. So this is standard, I would not touch any of these things. And then you need to import the scripts, those, those scripts you will download in the link that I will share with you later. Then DLTF loader, in this case it's because we are using this format. If you want to use FBX, it takes about 4-5 or five times longer to import the models. And I, I would just, if you want to uh, FBX importer, just comment and I will explain how to do that. Then I would go through uh, through here, this is not very relevant in this case. It's for debugging. If I want to um, want to debug in my uh, phone or even in my local server in the computer, I would. Uh, there is another tutorial. You can you can check it after this one. And then basically, I would just go through here. Then it is not so important. Okay, this part here is quite relevant. This function is used to reset the animation. You can adapt it to your needs, but in, in my case, every time I touch the screen, the animation will reset. So I can uh, prepare and record, of course, it's showing off. Uh, so I can, someone press the screen and then count to three, and the animation would start. And actually, this is not so well. Basically, you don't need to change anything from here. This is also very standard in AR Toolkit. I will create another tutorial to adapt a bit more in detail all these parameters, but for now I don't think it's necessary. This is about the lining of the scene. And then here comes the GLTF loader. So this is a bit more important. The loader, this is an important path. This is the relative path, and we are going to be importing this card here, the one I will be sharing with you. But, well, so you can put here any other link if you want. You can also import several models. In that case, you would just copy and just paste again and change the model. In our case, we don't need it. We only have one card, then we take the animation. It's only one animation that we have. So we take this one, and this is just to put 
that not to cast shadows uh, to them to the trace to the card trace. This you will see later, but it's important if you have any other model. I will just remove these lines because or, or just leave them, but non, don't name any child as plain. So this is scaled for this specific uh, object. So basically, from this function here, we take uh, the name of the model that you're importing and the scale of the object, and the time scale also is to reduce the speed of the animation. This is not very important, and then this is just to keep the anim bar here so you can rest it afterwards and we are adding the object to the scene okay this is all very very standard high performance is just improve the performance of the application and here we would set uh, the pixel ratio if you want it to run smoothlier because your phone is very old you could put a lower value but here uh, by default it's two I'm just commenting this line to, to leave it for you and that we can skip. So this is all very standard in the application. Okay, then this is to animate the, the, the model. This is also very standard. You can use the exact same things here, unless you have uh, more animations, in which case, well, that's another topic. I will create a more step-by-step um, -step, uh, augmented reality tutorial with a more detail in each step, but this is just to, to have it running without too many efforts. And then there comes the tricky part. Well, not the tricky part, but uh, it's, it's a very important one. So the pattern radio. This by default should be 0 0.5. If you're using any of the standard AR patterns <coughs> that comes with the, the augmented reality toolkit, I would just uh, a little bit like 0 0.6 if you're using my, my augmented reality uh, pattern. And then this is the minimum confidence. I will explain this a bit more in detail now when you're creating your own uh, marker if you want. And then mean confidence it means um, how accurate the, the camera, how precise the camera should uh, recognize the, the marker to start showing your scene. In this case, I leave it to 0 0.4, so even if it's not 100% sure that the marker is the one that should be uh, tracking. And then about the pattern ratio, I will explain now. The rest will leave it as it is. So coming back to this file, the pattern right, uh, the pattern is defined here in this line. So in this, in case you change the name, you will need to change this marker. But for the rest, it's not needed. Then we already have um, files. We have uh, modified whatever we need in case we need to change the pattern ratio. We need to change the confidence or the model. So here we are going to create our own augmented reality marker. So come here, and then. This is very easy. As I said, pattern ratio, this is the border size. You need to have at least some border. If it's like that, it will be harder for the application to recognize the marker. So I would recommend doing something. Maybe 0.8 is fine, but um, over this, is uh, it might flicker a bit. So I would just leave it like that. Then we play it with that. We choose 0.6, for instance, and then we upload it. Now that we have the photo here, this is the marker that we will be using. We would need to download only the marker. The marker will be a .pad file. This is a file that we are uh, basically importing. But, and you also, if you want to download the image, the result image, so you can print and scan it afterwards. But um, in this case, it is fine. I would download the marker. And then we can already try with the Chrome, with the phone. I will, I will show you how it looks. Uh, we connect our the phone here, and then <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, enable that. You can also watch how to do that in the other tutorial uh, that I have. So now it recognizes my phone. It will appear here, short in a few seconds, and here it is. So we inspect this tab, and I'm going to open this file. So here it is, um, this is what we see, we, it's too close so we won't see it. I'm using this marker for everything because I have this little uh, business card which is by the way awful. But So every time we press the screen, you see the card is here, but if I press the screen it will appear again and then that's for now how it would look. So I can close already the app. And then we know it's working with, uh, with this marker. What we'll need to do is to pack all these files and upload them to the server. So to upload them to the server, 
we're going to create a new server. I would recommend this one because it's free. It doesn't. It works pretty fine. And I had it in. You don't need to do anything specially, and it's very easy to sign up. You sign up with Google, and then you will get to your panel. In my case, I'm just going to skip this step, and then you can access files of 000 web host and put your website name and your password. So now that it's loading, and we will just basically go to this main uh, to the root of the server and go to public HTML and only thing we have to upload here is the files that you will download so you would need to put here the card jump only this file is needed only this one then you would create a folder JS and data and you would put basically the files that you have here so you would put js3.min.js uh, all these four scripts and then in data you would put the pattern, the dot pad, which uh, you are loading here, and also the car model here. So um, you would, you only need to upload these files, and that's it. You would have uh, the application running uh, from your phone. You only need to type from your computer or from your phone the link that belongs to your to your new website. And voila, here is your web application, your augmented reality. Feel free to test it yourself. If you're lost in, at any point, just let me know, comment below, and I will try to help you as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can follow all the tutorials that I will be publishing in a weekly basis. And also feel free to suggest your own tutorial. Thank you and see you next time.